Nobody lived my life. Nobody was standing at this ground here when we started to build this up. So this is also the reason why I don't really care what other people think because they're not in my skin very easily. Today's video was sponsored by Huel, a quick, affordable, nutritionally complete source of food with everything that your body needs. They've just sent me their new super greens. I'm gonna be trying these out later on. If you wanna find out more, head to the link in the description. One of the things I wanted to ask you about first is just to kind of introduce the temple. Actually, our organization here in Germany was founded already around 1996. So that means in order for us to really eventually come to this place, it took many, many years. And in 2011, we had the chance because we were also as a small community starting to expand. And so we had this chance to find that this complete area here was for sale. And there's a little unfortunate story behind it because in the beginning, this was like a restaurant. A really well-run restaurant where normally on the weekends always the big buses with the senior people were coming and then the whole place was full, they were eating inside and yeah, the problem was that after some time the, the cook, he unfortunately suffered from Parkinson and therefore lost his sense for um, tasting. Yeah, and that was the point where they couldn't anymore to keep up that type of business, so to run it as a restaurant. And on the other side, it was exactly that time when we started to expand from Kaiserslautern, where you are staying right now. First of all, from Kaiserslautern, we actually moved to Otterberg um, village, which is like in front of, if you follow that road on that village, we had a small family house where was initially what we call our temple. Wow. Yeah, so not even talking about this place. That was around 2011. And that time, then we had this chance that um, this was offered for sale. Yeah, and there, I have to say, you know, it's just like, for example, just because, yes, we do pray from time to time, but just from praying, nobody's going to pay you the bill to to buy this, yeah. So it really means that one of us had to pay uh, a credit and give a guarantee, of course, to the bank. And then eventually we actually uh, bought this place with what was affordable for us. But at the same time, I will show you around that once you start to really take care of one of the uh, construction sites that needs to be maintained here, you just directly can start with the next one. Yeah. So we are super happy to be located in, in that type of environment. And actually one of the person who is taking care of a lot of the outside area of the garden area, it's very nicely expressed that uh, actually it's really uh, we're really glad and happy that we're able to take care of this place. This is actually how I would really express it. That we have this chance right now to take care of that place and take it how it is right now and try to make it better from day to day. This is uh, how I would say it's not we're, that we're taking over this place, no. We're just taking care of this place. And by investing our energy, by investing our time, into all of this, I think this is how, in the first time that we met, I think this is the way how you are uh, putting some spirit into the things. It's of the energy and the, and what you have invested into places, into people. Yeah. For example, uh, the man who just went in there, he is one of our students uh, who comes for the public training classes that we normally have, for example, Monday evening. And yeah, he came with that basket of vegetables because um, this is also one way how we try to, let's say, reduce also the waste that is being produced out there. That means everything that he's bringing here is like a donation that we are still using for the food that we are cooking. Yeah, and yeah, so this community, even if sometimes if you look on on the internet right now, 
you see mainly like it's one, two people representing this monastery, but there is a huge of other people involved that make all of this possible. So just that sometimes people are in the foreground doesn't mean they are the only ones who are having a type of contribution to all of this. Yeah, and so it's small things that add up that eventually made all of this possible and yeah. Is it hard to find people like, like who, who want to help with the message? In the beginning, if something is like new and very attractive, it's easy to find many, let's say, followers because it's like that initial impulse, which always is like, um, which is easy, let's say. Yeah, for many people in the beginning, the first week over here, getting, uh, getting in touch with the Shaolin arts is an easy way. But there is that famous sentence, yeah, from 1000 that come, it's that one that stays. And no matter what, he is one of the very, very few from this complete monastery since the last 25 years who is still here, you know. Many people have started together practicing all of these things, walking this path of training. But eventually what is like the most um, valuable for us is the people that go through the up and downs and the in and outs and all different varieties in all these years. And therefore, yeah, he is uh, definitely a strong part of our community. And this is also something very important. Yeah, people always think, yeah, in order to be fully representing this, you need to live a monk life. Yes, from time to time you have this period where you are completely abiding to all of these rules that go hand in hand to live this type of spiritual life to develop yourself. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that you don't take part of other areas in this world. And especially now, really with uh, Xiao Shen, for example, the good part is that he has influence and he has exposure to a group of people I normally would never have. It is, for example, the ones that are doing the dancing. You know? But you know, on the one side here in the Shaolin Temple, we learn to cultivate ourselves, train ourselves in, let's say, the field of movement for the martial arts. But dancing is also like a movement art. So there is something which is similar. Yeah? And there is no dancer who doesn't have same, yeah, who doesn't have this effort or investment or discipline to reach some goals, same, same. So that means this is also like something important that if you're really stuck only to this field of, yeah, Shaolin is only martial art, well, then even for the future, you will always only get the same group of people being exposed to this type of teaching. But this is not about martial arts. This is about something to improve yourself physically and mentally. But one main method to do that in the Shaolin Temple is through the practice of the martial art. But it's like how you call it, it's, it's a means along the way. Yeah. So yeah, whereabouts are we located at the moment, like the temple? So we are located in the region of Rhineland Palatinate in Otterberg. It is a small, well, people don't like if you call it village, but we don't have so many inhabitants here, like 5,000, I think. So they already refer to Otterberg being like a city. Right. So Otterberg city, yes, and um, well, Germany, of course. And sometimes it's still strange to me if I see sometimes people asking, yeah, but where are you located? Actually, it shouldn't be so hard to find us, but still happens from time to time. So yeah, our monastery, this Shaolin Temple Europe is located here in, in Germany. And one of the main reasons why we actually refer to, to this place as Shaolin Temple Europe, yeah, is because we think it's really important to find a way and translate all of these different teachings into a language that European people, Western people understand. Yeah, and because many of our teachers, for example, Xiao Shen, me, the teacher, uh, Hang Suan Shifu, the abbot from here, 
we all either grew up in Europe or we have a very strong relationship to, to Europe. That actually was one of the reasons why we called it Shaolin Temple Europe. Yeah? Because meanwhile there are more um, Shaolin centers or Shaolin schools also within Europe. So it doesn't mean that we're like the main one. It only means that we have a very uh, strict idea already what we would like to, let's say, follow up in our goals regarding this organization. And that goal is that I think the Shaolin teachings have so many different and valuable information and methods inside that I think needs to be spread. I think um, we're going to talk about it more in one of the interviews. One thing I'm interested in just asking is how your you go about taking these East, the Eastern teachings and methodology and bring it to the West. And that now that we're in Europe is like taking those teachings and bringing it here. So actually there fits a very nice uh, story how it was in ancient times. Normally, if you would like to learn, for example, Kung Fu, and you go in ancient times to, let's say, a master, or you find a master, normally what you do is, you pay, first of all, a lot of money. That's how it starts. Okay? First of all, you pay a lot of money. But what is covered with that money? In that money is covered that during the time where you as a disciple want to learn something, you don't need to take care of where you're going to stay. You don't need to take care of what you're going to eat. Yeah? Because this is what part of the money is being used in order to make you be able to concentrate. So you want to learn something from a specific master, no problem. You pay that money and in that moment normally everything is being taken away from you so that it sometimes means you even live at that master's house and then he's gonna start sharing with you. Yeah. And like I said, food, shelter, all of this is taken care of. And this story is something that also very much relates to how I see our monastery nowadays. Because the reason why you see why we can right now do these things, why we can invest so many time training, developing, talking about philosophy, going out, making different nice uh, shots for the different social media and all of this to try share more. It's only possible because in a way we're all good. We're all good in terms of we have a place to sleep, we have enough to eat every day and actually we're feeling well. So that means for me it's very important everybody in the future who stays here in the temple in order for him or her to develop properly what needs to be ensured is enough to eat, enough to drink, a place to sleep and a certain type of, let's say, security. Security that is being covered by the monastery. And when this is, um, when, when this is being taken care of, then now I think the chances that you now concentrate fully on the teachings uh, is the most effective way right now to then create and develop a person that afterwards one day you can bring out and uh, let him share with the people outside. So that means it's about um, trying to establish this monastery in such a way that it gives security for the ones that want to dedicate some of their lifetime to learn. Yeah, because if you if you are supposed to learn something, but then you are still busy about how do I earn money, how do I pay my insurance, and all of these things, it just uh, it makes it difficult, yeah. So I mean, we're we're at the temple now, and this is what houses the teachings. Like this is what houses spreading that message out, and this is how you do that. This building itself. It's a, it's a huge building. It, it cannot be cheap to run. And, it, you know, obviously there's money, there's work, there's time, there's effort that goes into this. Today, it looks, you know, it looks beautiful. And you, it's a work in progress always, as you've said, but 
talk to me about the hard times of, of being here. Yeah, so actually, you see, first of all, it's a wooden building, which means that it was built, don't get me wrong, but I think it was before, before the 40s. Because when we later go inside, I can show you one, one sentence that is engraved into, into a wooden bar into that house. And um, I'm going to, I can translate it to you, but it says something like, uh, if you're alone, you do not need to worry. Very short now. If you're alone, you do not need to worry. But that was written 1945, yeah, which means like in times of war. So there is a very strict, um, let's say, understanding behind that sentence. So based on that, it's a very, very old building, which um, is of course beautiful, but at the same time needs like super, super much of maintenance. Yeah, and not even talking about the isolation, because like I told you in the beginning, when we came here, that whole building was still running on oil, but it was just really impossible for us to pay that oil bill. So the only chance that we had was to, to rebuild that heating system to heat up on wood, because we still had some, some wood, let's say, that we could use to heat up. And so this is what we did. But now, meanwhile, 2022, everything just raised in price. But yeah, it is, it's small things that sometimes just add up, that um, that just makes it uh, necessary to take care of. And then also right now over here, if you see, we had to cover the whole roof with some, with some foil in order that the rain doesn't, doesn't drop into our living spaces. And of course, it's all in a way planned to take care of, but it is unfortunately not so easy sometimes, especially not here in Germany, because we applied already for new ideas, how to renew the roof and all of this, but you need an approval for everything. So first of all, at the moment, sometimes we really have to, let's say, fight uh, in written words, fighting with letters, you know, in terms of getting things done like this. So therefore, we have an office that nobody, nobody sees in a way. You know, so we have people every day taking care of all the emails that come in, all the administrative issues that need to be solved while running, let's say, this uh, organization. And then at the same time, we have the people that now on a regular basis just really have to take the axe in the hand and chop the wood. Because without that wood, we're all gonna freeze. <laughs> yeah. So in order for me, in order for the ones that are sharing like the different teachings, the philo philosophical aspects of it, the things that people sometimes like to hear, in order for us to be able to do of that, there's a huge amount, a whole crowd behind us that is taking care of many other things. Yeah. And, yeah. and unfortunately, uh, I think it was two winters before, we had one pretty big tree, one of the tall ones up there, falling onto the roof. And we fixed it as good as we could for this moment, but sooner or later, these are also small uh, yeah, things that need to be repaired. Yeah. Huel have just sent me their new daily greens. If you want to find out more, head to the link down below. It's the most convenient way of getting everything that your body needs. It takes 10 seconds to prepare. I'm now going to hit this every single morning along with one of their shakes throughout the day. That saves me so much time when we're flying around the world with all our equipment, we're doing these podcast episodes, to know that I can get all of this nutrients, the minerals, the vitamins, in 10 seconds is mind-blowing. So if you want to find out more, head to the link down below where you can get 
Jo. Mm. Did I mention that it's absolutely delicious? Because it really is absolutely delicious. All of their products are down below. I think, I think that's the thing is a lot of people, they hear the message, they see the message and they forget that you guys need to survive to maintain that message. You guys have to, you have to live at the, at the bare minimum, but hopefully live to a, a, a good enough quality of life that it's, it's, you know, it's, it's comfortable, but then also maintain the, the actual temple itself. So in terms of like the people who come through and, and help, like, have you got, a, do you recruit for people who are going to be able to help fix a roof or is it just like everyone kind of joins in and helps out? So the nice part is that, for example, also thanks to this exposure that we also have like from you, yes, there are people contacting us to actually ask if they can support somehow with volunteering work. And so many people that spend some time with us here, that sometimes stay for three months, six months even, we have volunteers, the one who's taking the videos. He's here now almost since three years, yeah? And he also grew into this community. We all together figured out a place where he feels fine, something that he likes to do, and that also gives him some type of purpose and understanding that the work that he's doing, the time that he's investing, it's not for nothing, yeah? So, and therefore, there are volunteers which are supporting us with all different type of skills, whatever they have. If they have learned electrician in the past, it's something useful we can use. If somebody can build roofs, that's also welcome. So that means we have the group of volunteers. Then we have other groups which are then, for example, disciples. They are the ones starting from 1st of January, let's say, and then they are dedicating one year, first of all, to fully uh, immerse themselves in the Shaolin teachings, which means a disciple, when he comes here, he's being set free in a way from many things, let's say, financially wise, that we need in order to support all of this. The disciples are not a part of, let's say, earning the money. They are the ones receiving the teachings that with all of the money which is earned, is making it sustainable so that they can learn. Yeah. And yeah, this is the group of disciples. Because like I said, in order for them to really efficiently learn for some time, we want them to focus focus on just the teaching and not on, on how to maintain this way of life. And then, of course, we have like the guests that come, let's say, either for like the six days or like the weekend, the three days, like you also just saw inside. This is another group again of people that is in a way connected to this monastery. Yes. And then we have the local ones like Carl, who just came, who like donated us like the, the vegetables. They always come for the public classes uh, that sometimes take place. So already when we speak about this location right now over here, we already have four or five different groups or categories of people actually coming. So, and now this is what is taking place uh, over here. And since the last few years, I have to say, now the amount of requests to bring these teachings, let's say, also a little bit outside of this region has also increased, which means that I just told you um, I was on travel quite a lot this year. Uh, and just three weeks ago, also like in, in Abu Dhabi. And yeah, those are all like requests or these are all types of, um, of possibilities when people call us to share the knowledge outside. And therefore, there are workshops that we are organizing outside of Europe internationally. There are different keynote speeches sometimes, even all these TEDx talks, yeah? 
and maybe people should also know that at least me i didn't get paid for the tedx talk i don't know how it is with the other ones but you know the main idea was i know tedx has a huge platform and it's good to share the message because eventually it will always be the same the initial spark of um, the spark of inspiration is hitting a lot of people yeah but inspiration one day two days then the inspiration is gone that spark is gone and then the question is uh, who afterwards then remains still with this idea okay it's interesting i want to know more and like this like a natural separation takes place yes and sometimes people they don't um, they don't know but even this type of teaching even if it's for many people so eye-opening but at the end eventually there are really not many people who walk from beginning until end and so that means from a thousand people being exposed to this type of teachings everybody likes it in the beginning but from 1000 there is that one who then really integrates all of this into his life it becomes his life and because it becomes his life he can then start to share it out to more people so that means for me it is like i see every year thousands and thousands of people that i either talk to when i travel somewhere or people that come over here and the only thing i can do is i can always just give out that seed as good as i can but at the same time i know from all those thousands i give out only one is somewhere there and i don't even know who it is and where he is and and whatever yeah so this is also the part where in a way it is like you uh, you know you wake up every day and invest into something but you don't know when the fruit is going to come i know there's one fruit out there but i don't know where <laughs> you know it's so lovely to hear you say that because i think we've at mulligan brothers like you know we get millions and millions of people watching these videos and then uh, we've only had this like a couple of times but we've had a message where it transformed someone's life and there was, there was a, a gentleman who he, he was homeless and he used to watch our videos and he would message us all the time. And we remember him, don't we, William? He'd, he'd comment on our videos and he'd say, I'm not really doing very well at the moment, but your videos keep me going. And he's, what is he doing now? He's got a car, card trading. He's got this big company. He like, he's got a big company that's worth millions and he transformed his life. And that was, we, we you know, he, he's learned knowledge from loads of places, but that the way as you said that delivering that seed in such a specific way but yeah it's it really has impact. i mean here's one stood next to you now like who's you know you're one of the the thousand so the outreach you have to do to be able to hit millions of people yes so you see that as as an important part of this is getting to as many people as possible yes the shaolin teachings of old would have been very direct similar to people coming to the temple yes so now the new way of doing this or, or the way that you see your, your mission is to get in front of a lot of people. I mean, no, we can come actually really straight to the point. It's not that I only have friends yeah, to, to say it out like this, because not everybody likes my approach. Yeah. But the thing is like this, nobody lived my life nobody was standing at this ground here when when we started to build this up so this is also the reason why i don't really care what other people think because they're not in my skin very easily and there's always this saying for example that yeah don't let it become a business and then i always ask myself okay but what do you mean by business for me, when I think about the word business, I only think about there is something well organized, well structured, that, is, that has some type of input. And because it is so well and efficiently structured, it has some type of output. So it is the same that I see this monastery. In order for us to be able to share knowledge, we need to get it. Yeah? So, and the second part is, 
that no matter what this business produces, I really think the main question is what are you going to do with that output? Or what are you going to do with everything that this business is bringing you? And in our case, it's very simple because I can just show you everything or you can just look around here. There's nobody over here who is like, look, you, you came last year, I had almost the same clothes as right now. Doesn't matter how much money I earn or this temple earns, it's going to be the same next year as well. You know, because it's going to be reinvested all the time into making this place stand longer than any of us right now is living. Because this is the whole point about it. When you start entering into the Shaolin teachings, there is some, um, how you call it, some oath, oath, oh, yeah. some oath, yeah. And one of them is that you are starting to learn and understand that Shaolin is something bigger than any individual can be. So what does it mean? It means that you are investing your lifetime to support something which is bigger than you. And even so that my name right now is out very much, yes, but it's always out there together with the Shaolin Temple Europe, which is one day going, hopefully, going to be run by my disciples that I'm training right now. Because time is going to come, I'm not going to be here. Yes. But it changes nothing about the fact that what is being shared right now, why do we have so much resonance? There are groups which are, let's say, related to this type of teachings because, let's say, they feel some type of bond towards a person. I also understand that. But at the same time, it's really important. And for me, it's actually really important. You need to like the teachings. You need to like the methods. Or you, you need to understand the value of the sharings. This is the important part. Because if you like specific teachers, if you like a person, then this sometimes can shift very, very quickly, you know. And this is so in the way of approaching the Shaolin teachings. Of course, it's normal and it is human that you are resonating with some people more, with some people less. That's why even if there are two, three different teachers, you go to that teacher that you feel like more empathy towards or more sympathy towards, which is not a problem in the beginning. But shortly after, my suggestion is, and not just in the Shaolin area, um, if you get emotionally attached to a specific person, to a specific teacher, then it very often can really blur the picture of what actually this teaching is about. And that would be, in a way, a pity. So that means that I appreciate very, very much if people are following your channels, are following me, because they like uh, what we do. But it would be even better if they love and like the message that we, that we put out there. Mm. You know? Because this is what they realize there. There is the truth inside. The message is the truth inside. Because, you know, people always see me ma mainly. Uh, when I'm like publicly, I always have a uniform on. Of course I have a uniform on. But if I'm sometimes somewhere where there are no cameras, then I only have my sweater on, I only have my shirt on, I only have some pants on that you don't even want to see. Yeah. So what does it mean? It means, of course, there is some type of picture that I want to represent to the people, but nobody of us is like perfect. So, yeah, and because it also puts a lot of pressure, I have to say, on me, if people like think he must be perfect, he is perfect. No, I'm not perfect. Yeah. And this is also something, yeah, then people see him, yeah, he's many years together with us. A lot of years he spent in the Shaolin arts, but at the same time, he's dancing. And then dancing on different type of music. 
other people they don't even understand what type of music is it uh, like crump for example yeah and then they say yeah but the crump how come they have this type of aggressive text how does this fit to like the buddhist teachings and these are all type of concepts that only come because people are looking at us with an expectation they look at us with something that they already have in their mind that now needs to be fulfilled but I'm not there to fulfill somebody's expectation. I'm there to tell you this world is so big, open. Open up a little bit the eyes that you can see how big everything is. Yeah. And this is eventually what in all of these videos, why I share them, I think where that freedom lies. The freedom, you do not need to live by any type of concept because somebody tells you, this is how to live a proper life. No, the freedom is because there is so much that you can do. Just take care, you don't harm somebody along this way. So, and to come back to that point, business or no business, I don't care. We need some type of financial support to keep all of this running. And I know that none of this money is being wasted in anything that fills up one person's individual uh, desires. Definitely not. And that's why I would really like to, to share out that message. That it depends on how you are reinvesting your efforts. And what are you doing uh, with everything that comes in return. Business itself is not bad. Yeah? If this business, whatever uh, it is that you're running, if it is increasing the well-being of the people, increasing the amount of awareness that people start to develop about themselves, if it is increasing even the field of knowledge people have access to in order to increase their life quality, make more of that business. Yeah? Mm. So, but this type of separating, yeah, either you're a monastery or you're a business, either you're spiritual or you are physical. Yeah, this is exactly why it's called yin and yang cannot be separated. But what are you doing right now? You are separating monastery and business. You are separating spiritual and physical. Sorry, this is not how I understand this type of teaching. That's why I don't make it like this. As long as somebody is still running around with those separating thoughts, um, I think for me, this is not the way. Yin and Yang cannot be separated means you have to find a way. How can these things be combined? with the purpose, combine them for the harmony of yourself and the harmony of the rest. And like I also said before, sometimes I do not have the ability to reach certain groups of people. He does. So if I now say, yeah, come on, your dancers, they have nothing to do, the attitude they have has nothing to do with with my group of people, then what does it bring? Nothing, only that uh, our groups are separated and that we cannot find something in common where we can grow together. So that's why this is not how our perspective is. This is why we continuously try to see, okay, what ways can we do to mix sometimes things together? And then it becomes suddenly a little bit modern, where again, then maybe old traditionalists then start to say, no, this cannot be, you cannot mix the ancient with the modern. So you can't mix the past with the future. Of course, you have to mix the past with the future. And these are the type of things, yeah, that sometimes are maybe not clear, but also make me busy from time to time. <laughs> Let's head back in because also as well, I decided to take my hoodie off and uh, <laughs> a little bit colder than I thought it was going to be.